Curious about what $700,000 will get you in Falls Church, Virginia? Well, today we're going to be showcasing a few different neighborhoods and properties in that budget. And we're also going to be going over local attractions, transportation options, and restaurants in Falls Church as well. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. I'm Darren Robertson, realtor in Northern Virginia with Robertson Residential Group, and we get calls all the time from people just like you who are looking for properties in Falls Church in this price range. So it doesn't matter whether you're looking to move tomorrow, next week, next month, or next year. Be sure to reach out to me via text, email, or phone so we can set up some property tours for you like the ones we're seeing today. Today, we're in Falls Church in Fairfax County, Virginia. The three neighborhoods we're gonna look at in Falls Church will give you a really good idea of how prices vary a lot, subdivision to subdivision and zip code to zip code. Location really is the most important thing in real estate. So before we head out to see some properties in the 700,000 range, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about Falls Church so you know more about the area. Where is Falls Church and what is nearby? Falls Church is located in Fairfax County inside the Beltway in Northern Virginia. Not to be confused with Falls Church City, which is the adjacent two square mile independent city I grew up in. It's just three miles northeast of Annandale and eight miles west of Washington, DC. It's convenient to both I-66 and the Beltway, making commuting relatively easy. If you head into downtown Falls Church City, there's a great weekly farmer's market, which is open year round. You'll find the historic Cherry Hill Farmhouse located in the heart of Falls Church City. In addition to the great restaurants and bars in Falls Church City, you can also visit the State Theater. The State Theater is this historic property I still remember visiting as a kid when I grew up in the 80s. I saw movies there. Now it's a really fun live music spot. They have some great shows there and they have really good food and drinks as well. Falls Church is an excellent location offering an easy commute for daily errands and work historic attractions, and so many dining and retail opportunities. So the closest metro stations to most homes that are located in Falls Church are the East Falls Church Metro Station and the West Falls Church Metro Station. So now that you know a little bit more about this area in Falls Church, let's go check out what $700,000 will get you in this area. Okay, we're gonna get started with City Park Homes in Falls Church. City Park Homes is located in West Falls Church and has over 530 homes in this neighborhood, dating back to the 1940s to 1950s, with some newer construction as well. Now let's talk about the prices in this neighborhood, and then we'll get into some more detail about the typical lot sizes, the types of homes, and the typical sizes of homes in this neighborhood. A price range of around $675,000 to $725,000 will get you a Cape Cod or a Colonial home in this neighborhood that has three to four bedrooms, and two to three bathrooms, and somewhere between around 1,600 and 2,400 total square feet, including basement square footage. Many homes in this neighborhood have basements, but some do not. Homes in this price range will range from slightly updated to a good amount of updates, depending on their size. These are the types of finishes you can expect to get in homes in this price range. Sometimes you can have a smaller property that has boatloads of upgrades, and that can cost as much as a bigger property that is more modestly updated or doesn't have many updates. Now, you'll find some homes in this neighborhood that will sell for as low as the 500,000s on up to some homes that sell for over a million. It just depends on the size of the home, the size of the lot, and the upgrades. For instance, the homes that sell in the 500,000s will usually be on the smaller side and won't be as upgraded. And the homes that sell for over a million will usually be on the larger side and they'll often have more upgrades and will sometimes be newer construction. Of course, all of this will vary based on the uniqueness of the particular property, the lot size, the level of upgrades, and what's happening in the market at that exact time. Okay, we've discussed price of homes in this neighborhood. Now let's get into more detail about the types of homes in this neighborhood, including the average number of sales per year, the sizes of yards, and more. Most homes in City Park Homes are Cape Cods, Ramblers, and Colonials. You'll find a lot of homes here that have brick exteriors and vinyl siding exteriors. Many owners of homes here have painted their brick homes various colors over the years, which gives them a more modern feel. You'll typically find homes with anywhere from three bedrooms and two baths on up to five bedrooms and five baths or even more. Some homes in this neighborhood have garages and some do not. The average above grade square footage is somewhere between one to 3,000 above grade square feet. And most homes have basements, which add a lot to the total finished square footage. So when I talk about above grade square feet, I'm just talking about the square footage above the basement. It's also called the taxable living area and a tax record. The typical total finished square footage of homes in this Falls Church neighborhood ranges anywhere from around 1,600 square feet to well over 4,000 square feet. 
Typical lot sizes in this subdivision range from 0.17 to 0.25 acres, but you will find some lot sizes that are even larger. Like many older neighborhoods inside the Beltway, City Park Homes does not have an HOA. This is a large subdivision and it has a good amount of turnover. So you'll typically see about three home sales per month in this neighborhood on average. This subdivision is between Graham Road and Annandale Road. And residents here have access to three local parks, lots of retail and shopping centers and dining options. And we're gonna head off to our next destination, which is Pimmett Hills in Falls Church, Virginia. Pimmett Hills is located inside the Beltway within Leesburg Pike and Dulles Toll Road. This single family detached home subdivision has over 1,200 homes with a lot of properties that were built in the 1950s and a good amount of newer construction as well. Okay, let's talk about prices in this neighborhood and then we'll get into more details about the homes, like the lot sizes, the types of homes and all that. In the current market, a price range of around 675,000 to 725,000 will typically get you a Rambler in this neighborhood that has three to four bedrooms and one to three bathrooms and somewhere between around 900 and 2,000 total square feet, including basement square footage. Now, there are a lot of homes in this neighborhood that have basements, but there are a lot that do not. So homes in this price range in Pimmett Hills will get you anything from a fixer upper on up to a home with some modest updates. It totally depends on the size of the home and the size of the lot. Homes that have lots of updates in Pimmett Hills tend to sell for higher price ranges than this. The specific price range and condition of homes in Pimmett Hills in this price range depend a lot on their size. These are the types of finishes you can expect to get in homes in the $675,000 to $725,000 price range. Now, you'll find homes in this neighborhood that will sell for as low as around $600,000 on up to almost $2 million. It totally depends on the size of the home, the size of a lot, what exactly is going on in the market at that exact time how many upgrades the property has, whether or not it's newer construction. For instance, the homes that sell for around $600,000 or maybe even a little lower, will usually be on the smaller side, most often around 1,000 square feet or a little smaller or a little larger. And there'll be fixer upper properties that many buyers will just wanna tear down and build new construction on the lot. The homes that typically sell for $1.5 million or more in Pimmett Hills will often be newer construction, very large properties with lots of upgrades, well over 4,000 finished square feet. Keep in mind this will always vary based on the uniqueness of each particular home, the size of the lot, the number of updates, and the sales activity in the neighborhood at that exact time. Okay, we've talked about price of homes in Pimmett Hills. Let's get into some more detail about the typical lot sizes here, the, the sizes of the homes, and the styles of the homes here. There are older homes and newer homes in this subdivision with lots of recent construction happening. Common home sizes are between 900 and 4,500 above grade square feet, and some are even larger. There are a lot of homes in this neighborhood that have basements, especially the newer construction homes. And the basements add a lot of square feet to the total amount of square footage in these homes. For instance, you'll find newer homes with basements in this subdivision that have well over 6,000 total finished square feet, and some with over 7,000 total finished square feet. You'll find some homes with as few as three bedrooms and one bathroom, on up to some very large homes with seven bedrooms and seven bathrooms or more. Some homes in Pimmett Hills have garages and some do not. Most of the newer properties do have garages. Typical lot sizes are anywhere from around 0.2 acres to around one third of an acre. And you'll find some lots that are over half an acre. Common home styles in this neighborhood are Craftsman, Rambler, Cape Cod, and Colonial style homes. You'll find a lot of homes with brick and vinyl siding exteriors and a lot of newer construction homes that have more upgraded exteriors like hardy plank siding. Pimmett Hills does not have an HOA. You'll typically see anywhere from around five to six sales per month in this neighborhood. It's a large subdivision, so there's usually a good amount of turnover each year. You're about 25 to 30 minutes from DC without much traffic and the same distance to airports. But just keep in mind that traffic in Northern Virginia is bad. <laughs> and this impacts the commute times a lot. You'll find East Falls Church Metro Station only about eight minutes from here. Tyson's Corner is a huge shopping mall and it's only about five minutes away. You'll find many different international cuisines to choose from in nearby restaurants. The historical Pimmet Barn dating back to the Civil War is another local attraction. If you love the outdoors, nearby Pimmet Hills, you'll have access to five local parks. And we're gonna head off to our final destination, which is Valley Brook in Falls Church, Virginia. Valley Brook is a small, charming, single-family detached home subdivision in Falls Church in Fairfax County. It dates back to the 1950s. There are about 100 homes in this subdivision. 
Okay, let's go over prices in this subdivision, and then we'll get into more detail about the lot sizes, the types of homes, and the styles of homes in this neighborhood. A price range of around $675,000 to $725,000 will currently get you a Rambler or split level home in this neighborhood that has three to four bedrooms and two to three bathrooms, and somewhere between around $1,400 and $2,000 total square feet, including basement square footage. Now, many of the homes in this neighborhood have basements, and some do not. Homes in this subdivision in this price range of $675,000 to $725,000 will typically be move-in ready homes that have a modest amount of updates up to some properties that have a good amount of updates. It just depends on the size. These are the types of finishes you can expect to get with homes in this price range. Now, you'll find some homes in this neighborhood that will sell for as low as around $600,000 up to over $900,000. It just depends on the lot size, the size of the home, the finishes in the home, like the level of upgrades, and the numbers of beds and baths. For instance, the homes that sell for the low 600,000s will usually be smaller and won't be as upgraded. And the homes that sell for over 900,000 will usually be larger and will often have more upgrades. It's important to remember that this will vary based on how unique the specific home is, the level of updates, and what's selling in the market at that exact time. Okay, now that we've talked about prices of homes in this neighborhood, let's get into some more details about the types of homes, the typical lot sizes, the number of homes that sell here usually in a given year. Common home styles in this neighborhood are split levels, contemporaries, and ramblers. You'll find a lot of homes with brick and vinyl siding exteriors. You'll typically find homes that have anywhere from three to four bedrooms and two to four bathrooms. Most homes have somewhere between a little over a thousand above grade square feet to well over 2,000 above grade square feet, with some being a little larger. Again, above grade square footage just refers to the square footage above the basement, and many homes in this neighborhood do have basements. After factoring in the basement square footage of homes in this neighborhood, you'll find some properties here that have over 3,000 total finished square feet. So you'll find some large properties here. Some of the homes in Valley Brook have garages and some do not. Most of the lot sizes in Valley Brook are anywhere from around 0.3 acres up to closer to half an acre, and some are even larger. Valley Brook does not have an HOA, and homes rarely come on the market in this fairly small, well-established neighborhood. You'll typically see somewhere around seven to eight sales per year here. Sleepy Hollow Road is to the west and Annandale to the north. When there's not much traffic, you're about a 30-minute drive into DC and about 30 minutes away from airports, a little less to Reagan National Airport and a little more to Dulles Airport. However, it's important to keep in mind that traffic is bad in the DC area, so it's good to analyze commute times at different times of day. You're not very far from either the West Falls Church Metro Station or the East Falls Church Metro Station. Seven Corners is just a few minutes away, making your daily errands and excursions a breeze. Nearby Seven Corners, you can find all sorts of dining, retail, and shopping options to choose from. Homes Run Stream Valley Park runs through the community and offshoots many local trails, hiking and play opportunities at its various park attractions. So now you know what $700,000 will get you in Falls Church, Virginia in Fairfax County. If you're interested in seeing any properties, just send me a text or call me or email me and I'll get that set up for you. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can stay up to date on all the videos we do about Falls Church and all over Northern Virginia. Thanks so much for watching and until next time. <laughs>